Oh boy, this is so amazing. Hey, Zebuzone here. Today we're going to talk speed booster and how they affect the image quality of a shot. First, we're going to see how a speed booster actually works. And then we're going to compare images shots using a speed booster from the well-known brand Metabones against its lower end counterpart, which is Viltrox, and see how they stack up. At the end of the video, we're going to see which speed booster you should take depending on the lenses that you wish to use. Here we go. A speed booster is basically an adapter that allows you to use EF mount lenses such as Canon or Sigma lenses on small sensors such as micro four foot sensors that you can find on the Pocket 4K or the GH5 for instance. And the interesting part is that it's not just holding the lens like this uh, small inexpensive metal adapter, uh, but it's also reducing the size of the image created by the lens to fit the smaller size sensor, which is the micro four third system. And this is why most speed boosters are made with five to six pieces of glass, which all together transform a big image into a smaller image that is wider, sharper and brighter. So at this point, you might just think, um, wait, is this really possible to increase the brightness of an image just by adding some glass between the sensor and the lens? Well, actually, yes. And the principle is very simple. Think of when you last used a magnifying glass to focus the rays of the sun and start burning a sheet of paper. So here you can see that the spot is very bright and this is because we're increasing the concentration of light on a given surface, which is making it much brighter. And this is how a speed booster actually manages to increase the brightness of an image. With um, Speed Booster Ultra, the aperture increases by one stop. So that means that with an f2.8 lens, you can boost the aperture up to f2.0. Besides, the field of view gets wider with a Speed Booster because instead of seeing just a portion of the image created by the lens, you are seeing the full image since it has been resized to fit the whole sensor properly. Um, each lens is actually designed for a specific sensor. So if the image created by your lens is too big for your sensor, what you're seeing is a lower quality crop of the full image. This is why by scaling the full image circle on your sensor, the speed booster also increases the sharpness of your image a bit. A speed booster has an internal chip that allows the camera to control the lens's aperture, stabilization and focus. And by the way, the principle of a 1.4 or two times extender, which allow you to uh, double a focal length is actually the same. It's just the opposite calculation. Um, instead of decreasing the size of the image circle, or you're actually increasing it, which means you will get a softer, darker, but zoomed in image. Unfortunately, because of all this tech, speed boosters do not come out cheap. And this is why I was very curious to compare two competing products, the most common Metabone speed boosters, which is uh, around $600 and the Viltrox EFM2, which is $170. You can also find a simple $20 adapter ring, uh, which is equivalent to not using a speed booster at all. So let's see how these two compare in the real world. So looking at the outside of the two bodies, it's obvious that the Metabone Speed Booster has the highest build quality. It definitely looks rock solid compared to the Veltrox. Um, it has these soft cushions, which I believe are there to hold um, the lens firmly in place. Um, I found that there's much more play with the Viltrox than with the Metabones. Um, the lens can move a little with the Viltrox and Actually, some lenses didn't even lock at all. So it's pretty clear that the Viltrox is roughly a lower quality copycat of the Metabones. One advantage though is that the Viltrox EFM2 is lighter than the Metabone Speed Booster. But let's see how image quality compares out in the field. 
I shot several scenes uh, with a Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera and a Sigma 18 to 35 and examined the footage full screen. My take is that the quality gap will be more or less important depending on the type of scene you're shooting. Um, on nature shots with high depth of field, um, it really struck me. The Metabones produces a much higher quality image than the Viltrox. Generally speaking, when looking at the center of the image, the two of them are often equivalent, with the Metabones being a tad sharper. But when you head towards the sides of the image, that's where the Viltrox starts looking very blurry with nasty aberrations. And these aberrations uh, get worse on objects that are close to the camera. Here you can see how all this translates when shooting on a standard calibration chart. You can see that the Metal Bones is much higher quality overall than um, the Viltrox. However, when shooting an isolated subject with low depth of field and blurry backgrounds, you tend to forget which footage is shot with which since the sides are blurred anyways. So in that very situation, the two speed boosters produced a very close end result. With this combo, a Pocket 4K, Sigma 1835, I did not find any vignetting using either of the speed boosters. Please note that you will get vignetting if you pick uh, the wrong speed boosters. And this is the aim of our last talk, which is choosing your speed booster. EF mount or Canon mount lenses roughly fall into two categories. Um, you have full frame lenses on the one side and APS-C lenses on the other side. Full frame lenses have a bigger image circle since they are designed for large sensors such as the 5D or the 1DX. Um, on Canon series, you can spot these lenses by the red ring on the tip of the lens. On the contrary, APS-C lenses have a smaller image circle, which is very close to the Super 35 format found in many professional cameras. Since full frame lenses produce a bigger image circle than APS-C lenses, you will want to use a Speed Booster XL for full frame lenses and a Speed Booster Ultra with a lower reduction factor for APS-C lenses. I would recommend going for the Speed Booster Ultra since you can use both type of lenses and you don't have to worry about compatibility. Just be aware that both Speed Boosters cannot be used with the Canon EFS mount. So to finish with, well, you're definitely getting what you pay for. Um, I had read people posting on forums saying that the two of them were pretty equivalent, but in the end, after some testing, I don't think so. So unless my unit is defective or has some sort of quality control issues, I think there's an important gap between the two models. If you're on a budget, I'd recommend going for a smart adapter instead uh, with no glass, because the problem is that the Viltrox on some scenes can really affect the image quality. This is it. Um, I've done my best to do the best possible comparison. Now, uh, if you've had a different experience or remarks, uh, feel free to share in the comments below. Thanks for watching and au revoir.